My first memory of being inside a music practice, a ritual of music practice, was when I was three years old. My mom would take me to music lessons once a week. I would go to the piano teacher. There were maybe two or three of us. We would sit on the floor and I would look up at the teacher and listen. She would play. And I would sing the notes in my body. bodies could play my notes. first excerpt, I'm playing a solo piece at the Whitney Museum on an hourglass harp. David Horvitz, a conceptual artist, he designed these, and he at Triple Canopy, they invited me to play these glass instruments. When I started to play these instruments, 
it made me think about glass physics. It made me think about fragility and the equation for viscosity. Or when a liquid turns to a solid, or a solid turns to a liquid, and in those moments, in those in-between moments, what kind of rhythms those were. And out of this came the piece in the second excerpt, which is titled Fragility, an Exploration of Polyrhythms. In this piece, I questioned that maybe it could be a game. Maybe it could be a performance game in which dancers or a dancer, and in this case, Soliman Badolo, the choreographer, could play my sounds, could wear it and play my sounds. And we programmed this with Tommy Martinez from Pioneer Works with Xbox Connect. And the ensemble piece with my band, Dreamtime Ensemble, we play an excerpt there of a game piece. Fragility, it explores human interdependence and how we play and interact through sound and it's kind of orchestrated through a participatory game. I will be recording this for the Asia Society Triennial 2021 and we will release it in the spring. I've been thinking lately about how important it is to honor our dreams. And what I find in reflecting in my adult life is I feel I am continually dreaming and living the dreams of what I've been dreaming in my childhood. And that perhaps those dreams in my childhood were dreams before I was here, of my parents, of my family, of generations before me, before us. When I was a little girl, people would ask the question, what do you want to be when you grow up? And without a doubt, without a blink, I would always say, when I grow up, I want to be a fish. These next two pieces, I think I'm still dreaming about that.
Another part of my music practice is how I develop my listening practice. Part of that has been over the years developing my field recording and how that has affected and influenced my work as a composer, a percussionist, a drummer, and a sound artist. In these next two excerpts, specifically you'll see work of during a time that about a decade I was living in the Philippines during the winters and I had the wonderful opportunity to work with many dear people to me who are traditional artists, composers, ethnomusicologists, filmmakers, sound engineers, to tell the story of these great musicians and their great music. As musicians, we have been traveling like birds, perched over mangroves in Auckland, singing outside villas in Ferrara, sometimes as a bright kingfisher in a farm in Pangasinan, sometimes trapped in a cage like a minor bird in Bangkok, or humming busily in the blueberry bushes of upstate New York. Trying to find my way back home in the music, I hear a haunting melody more distressed than I imagined. Songs of the birds come from heaven. You cannot freeze culture. If you freeze culture, that means the culture is dead. You cannot just write down these epics and say, okay, we, are, we have preserved it. What is important is that the epics are relearned. I always uh, regard this instrument as not just objects. These instruments are like what you call prisms. <laughs> 
prisms by which you'd see a larger world. You talk about bamboo instruments, you talk about nature, where they come from, their use in life. You know, these bamboo instruments are, are not just played for sound. They are pl played for different purposes. So you see the life by which these instruments are relevant. You see a student playing piano. How is that relevant to you as a Filipino? I think they're missing the importance of their own music as a Filipino. When you go abroad, they will not ask you play Mozart. They, they ask you, what is your music? What is your Filipino music? So that is what they're missing. It's been interesting for me to grow up in two cultures. America is very much a patriarchal society, and the Philippines is very much founded on a matriarchal society. So the lens of how we see things is really flipped. One thing is how we place gender on music and musical instruments was very bizarre to me because it flipped depending on which culture you come from. Percussion music Gong music traditionally is passed down by the women in the Philippines, and string music traditionally is passed down by the males in the Philippines. I mean, now parents teach their kids and communities learn from their elders, so now everybody plays, and I've had many different teachers, but it's interesting to think about that, being a percussionist, and how different the lens is on gender depending on where you're born and where you live. Another aspect of my music practice is field recording. Not just recording traditional artists, but also recording traditional artists of spiritual music. And also, as more recently, recording nature, or I might say natural sounds, which has been very much a spiritual and meditational practice for me. I think it's something that has really helped my well-being a lot. These next excerpts, the first one, is shot in Morocco, while I was working with Abdurrahim Amrani and the Ham Chafez Sufi group. Allah, Allah, Allah. 
Remembering to honor our dreams. Keeping the music close in our bodies. Always returning to a ritual of joy. 